Hi guys! Welcome back to my garden. Uh, it's been a very nice and cool weekend. It's early days of September and because it's so nice and chilly, it's chilly because I'm wearing long sleeve, okay? First time <laughs> in this summer. It's nice and breezy and I have a few projects that I would love to finish up today. Well, at least this weekend. It's probably gonna last me longer than one day. <laughs> uh, I wanted to show you what they are and I wanted you to go on the ride with me. I really enjoy watching these gardening videos from other channels and I just love watching how people work on their on their yards, what they do, their process of thinking. So I'd love to do that for you too if you're interested. <laughs> okay, let's start. Starting with smelling the roses. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna show you um, a quick look of what we're working with. You can already probably see a few different changes in the sizes and I have pulled out a few annuals out already because they were kind of done for the season. Uh, you can see a few plantings right here that I'm excited about. This is the rose that I talked about a little bit. It's firefighter rose. It was in the pot, was not doing great. So it's already about four feet and I've planted it about a foot down a month ago. <laughs> so, so it has just taken off. I'm very excited about it. I've also planted, it also smells amazing guys. I can't even tell you like, this is called firefighter. I think I will definitely plant a couple more throughout my garden in, in the coming years if I can. Easy going, disease resistant, beautiful, reblooming blooms. Just really pretty. I'll show you a little bit with my little waterfall. <laughs> okay, I've also planted this um, red fountain dwarf grass. I thought it would be a little smaller. Um, I don't know if I did it right. I probably didn't. Um, I had beautiful gladioli here, about like 10 or 12 of them and they bloomed out great but then I'm like what am I supposed to do with the spikes they don't really look great so I planted this one here to kind of camouflage it <laughs> but now it looks a little cluttered but now I'm also looking at this rose and it's gonna just take over this whole area anyway so you're not gonna be able to see very much so I'm kind of okay with it for now also don't know how I feel about the different shapes and sizes of my roses here look they're all different sizes this one's a newly planted one. It shouldn't be too big, probably four feet, um, the highest. It's called Barbara Streisand and it's beautiful. It's pink, kind of um, lavender pink. Okay, so the few changes that I need to be doing and kind of one of the main ones. Do you see this beautiful Lori Borm? This is called Purple Majesty. This one's doing great. I have planted it and it was, at least two times less size than that. And this is about two feet wide and high right now. So it's doing great. I've also at the same time planted this one, <laughs> that little guy, and it's not doing very good. So I'm assuming it's because this tree is way too shady for it. And it does get a lot of morning sun, probably about two to three hours. And I have a feeling it's just not enough for it. So I'm gonna dig that out. And instead, I wanted to find something um, also evergreen that will bloom in winter because uh, like this one will drop the leaves, the rose will die down. So like this whole corner right here, it's not gonna be here in the winter. So for a replacement, I got this Pinkaboo Camellia. These are the beautiful blooms and look, it already has some blooms starting out the little buds are here so this gets 10 by 10 feet but it gets there in about 12 years so by then you know we're probably gonna move out I'm sure or if not you know it will be great there's definitely space for 10 feet right there and just about 10 feet and that's it this is fragrant variety and it says that you can uh, float blossoms in a bowl to enjoy the fragrance indoors and I was like okay i i need to do that <laughs> uh, because you know you don't want to cut the whole piece here since it grows so slowly that will cost you like a season of growth if you just cut the flowers on the stem so instead you just cut the flower itself and you just kind of let it float in the bowl and i thought okay i have got to try that <laughs> oh look it actually matches my color nails right now 
And then this poor little Laporum. Yeah, you see it's really not getting any sun at all. And that one is going to go into a different area right here. I think it's going to look good with contrasting with my plum tree here. And with these small little breath of heaven that are going to get pretty huge. I have planted them very small because I'm trying to save money on all, on all of the little shrubs. So I buy small and then I just have to wait a little longer. Uh, we're still planning on cutting down this guy and the shrubs behind it and these two trees. So I'm trying not to plant anything here. So it goes right here. I think it's going to be beautiful, kind of five by six uh, huge shrub. It's going to look great. Daryl, while I was gone, has been keeping up with de-weeding and taking out this stupid periwinkle that previous owners have planted. Now it has taken over. We have planted these three shrubs that have beautiful yellow flowers and they get pretty huge. I wanted to do like a little cascade of them. They also were very inexpensive and they're doing good in our area. This is the look at everything so far in that garden. I'll just show you a little, little glance. Okay. We have a lot of work you guys to do, of course. <laughs> Here's another beautiful camellia that I have planted this year. It was on a huge sale at the end of the winter season. So after it bloomed out, basically they had it on like half off. And I just ran and I grabbed it and I was so excited. This one's also very beautiful and it's doing great right here in kind of a, well, almost full shade. Okay, another small project is to dig out this rose. This is a beautiful rose that's called Amazing Grace. I got it from Heirloom Roses. They have their own root roses and it came like very tiny like this. So it's gonna take a couple years for it to like um, become established and I'm okay with that. But right now I need to replant it because it, it doesn't get enough sun. It's not doing the greatest in here. It's still very tiny and it's uh, about three, three months since I planted it. Just not a great spot for it, the bottom line is. Okay, time to clean up this whole area. I'm, we're gonna dig out a couple of plants in here. giant thank you looks much nicer a little bit more clean I don't think I'm ever gonna plant a sunflower just in the middle of my bad plant anymore all right so the rose is planted it's very disgusting there you can see just how much standing water we get you can actually see how swampy everything is. So whenever I plant roses here, I build them up off the ground. Uh, this time we gave it about, not actually as much as I thought it would, but you know, what, what am I gonna do? What am I supposed to do? This is what it is. Okay. So me and Mila are gonna do a little bit of things here. We harvested the sunflower. Remember how we did it? So Mila is going to get some of the sunflower seeds and then we're going to uh, roast them. And yeah, I'm going to switch these plants. This plant I have tried so hard. <laughs> it had spider mites. It actually had new growth, but it would never come through. And then eventually just this else happened. And I've been watering it and fertilizing it and still just, it's just dying. So instead I got this one for five bucks, an English ivy, so I'm going to plant that in there. Yeah. I'm on the chair! Oh. Somebody did poop on the chair and she touched it with her finger and oh, she's like, oh, oh. And now she's touching the seeds. Oh, uh, well, extra flavor. <laughs> Good job. 
So this is the night time. Well, I should say it's the evening, about 7.30 p.m. I love this arch so much. Okay, so I planted the lyrp worm in here. <laughs> you cannot see it's so dark. Uh, now it's time to go to sleep and get ready for bed. Hey guys. Okay, so it's two days later. <laughs> that day I went to pick up Mila after I recorded the video. I started doing some projects and like the day got away from me. So I was able to plant only a fringe flower shrub. And then that was it. It started raining and it rained for two days. It just stopped raining today. Um, so while it was raining, basically, I was really in the mood for all of the fall stuff because it's like early days of September. And in our household, okay, we decorate. Uh, September, I decorate uh, for fall. And then in October, like first few days of October, we decorate for Halloween. Then we take out Halloween at the end of October, like basically like November 1st or something. And then we keep everything from for just October decorations all the way through Christmas almost. Like we do a break uh, for about a month be between um, Thanksgiving and Christmas. So look at this. Have my wreath. I'm really one of those people who doesn't really like too many fake flowers, so I prefer like real ones and these are um, like a dried up uh, wreath. And then I made this sign last year. I didn't do it myself, no. I went to um, like a paint night, you know, where you get some wine and pizza and then they also teach you like some kind of craft. So I did this craft and it says, hello fall. <laughs> So I'm gonna go decorate my outside. So while my spaghetti squash is baking, it takes like 40 minutes at almost 400 degrees, I believe. I think so. Uh, so while it's cooking, I'm gonna decorate a little bit in here. I don't know if Mila's gonna help me. She might, we'll see. These are decorations for now. Again, we'll have more for, for fall once the pumpkins start rolling in. We start adding them right here, right here. Officially, the fall is starting. <laughs> okay, here's our wonderful spaghetti squash. Okay, so this is my plating for today. We have some Brussels sprouts uh, that I made yesterday. Then this is the spaghetti squash with the pork and basically the tomatoes and carrots and onions and garlic and then this is noodles i like to mix in mine with the with this and it becomes basically like a vegetable with a little bit of carbs delicious now continue to up there to plant the camellia since i already took out the loriporum french flower so we're gonna make a bigger hole now there While Daryl is getting a rock bar, I want to show you the view from the top down. We never really see it from this angle. <laughs> so you can see it like this too. A different look, huh? This is the bird feeder that we have. Oh, it's a big rock. So while Daryl is trying to get that rock out, I'm gonna clean up this area a little bit. You, know, you wanna help me pull out some of your old flowers right here?
I'm gonna show you our first cucumber lift up one and only for the whole season <laughs> okay it's gonna get a little bigger so it's gonna be like a whole little patch right here of just this beautiful grass okay so that guy's in I know I have to still fix my irrigation piping just because I keep ta taking things out and you see I have another shrimp that on, is unplanted there and have a little baby uh, root from the the dinosaur citronella that I'm gonna have to plant somewhere else because I cannot allow it to grow in here ever again I'm re realizing that I really like everything in drifts like in big amounts at the same time that's exactly why I decided to put these together so they're kind of uh, combined together just how I have along the line there I have the sort ferns and they've already started sprouting babies so they're gonna start moving this way a little bit then these are eventually gonna get almost three feet wide each so they're gonna be, get very shrubby and kind of big in this area and then we're gonna keep this as a little fairy garden for Mila it sounds like they're all just finished digging out most of the rock took way longer really stressful it's so annoying I have an ant on my head. and very stressful so but I'm very thankful yeah, in eternity eternity later you can see by the sun and these are the rocks that Daryl was able to there get out that was <laughs> terrible look at that huge giant rock four pieces you are my hero Daryl thank Ooh, you so much there. thank, thank God you for rock bar I don't know I'm not rock bar Okay, hi guys, it's a couple of days later, <laughs> but I'm back in the garden, couldn't really do anything, had to work a little bit more, but I wanted to show you today, we had a huge like garage sale in our community, and I picked up this chair for free from one of my neighbors, let me show you. Okay, so this is not really um, a chair, it doesn't have a seat, it, he said that it was from 1700s, it's real wood and it's carved out like a face of a woman he said that they used to carve out faces of masters of the house like the woman master so i picked it up and it was for free look how pretty it is isn't that beautiful so i got an idea i got an idea for it to be a garden chair and I could put like flowers. I was first thinking moss, but I don't think it's gonna live in our climate. So I'm gonna put like flower bed inside of it or something. Not sure, I'm gonna go close the door because they're so loud. <laughs> what should I make out of it? Do you like the idea for the garden chair? Right now I'm going to wash it, let it uh, dry here on the patio a little bit. And then I'm probably gonna, I was thinking of painting it, but I kind of like the rustic look. So I might just uh, spray paint it with like a clear coat just to protect it from the weather. It doesn't look too bad. It actually looks really nice, but it has these weird like glue marks almost. I don't know what that is, but it wouldn't come off. <sighs> I'm so scared of lead paint. I don't want any of it <laughs> that I'm like really don't want to touch like with the scratch or scrub it at all i don't really want to do that so okay i might need your opinion actually on that <laughs> lately i'm asking you for a lot of opinions but it's really cool chair isn't it i don't want it to be in the house just because the face is a little bit you know creepy but i don't know what should i do with it i'm really thinking about it now because i know the seat is pretty easy to find maybe it's just not gonna be a perfect size you know but it's all fixable and doable or again should I just keep it in the garden and make it into a beautiful um, like a flower bed literally put a, a huge pot in the middle the one that would fit maybe find something close to the color and then have beautiful flowers that will kind of pour out out of it so I really wanted to plant a couple of things too I'm gonna show you okay so I got an order of proven winners uh, this beautiful superbina plum vine verbena this is the second day 
It basically showed up almost like this looking. This one's completely dead. I've been watering it twice a day and it's very wet as you can tell inside but it just didn't do great. My original plan was to actually uh, dig out these lantanas because they look very messy. I don't know. I really wanted something that will cascade over the rocks and I guess they are doing that but I, just, I was kind of hopeful for a little bit more color. Then I also got this little lime um, hydrangea, little lime, so it's a smaller shrub. I know there's lime light uh, hydrangea, but this is little lime. And it's supposed to grow to about up to five feet when it's fully established, which is not that bad. Tall and wide, so it's a pretty big bush, big shrub. So my thought was to plant it here because we have a lot of standing water here. We actually have a, um, a pipe here somewhere <laughs> under the weeds. <laughs> or I'm really thinking of potentially not planting it and putting it in the pot in that area and let it sit there in the pot for a while until until I figure something out. Okay, so here's the thing. I planted my hydrangea into a pot, one of the options I wanted to consider. Instead of pulling these guys out, I cut around the back a little bit and around the sides. I really watered everything, that's why it looks a little messy. I've added a lot of soil to it and I've added um, uh, some of the mulch on top in hopes that maybe I'll get more shrub here. Because <laughs> it is doing what I wanted it to do, kind of. And it is to droop over these crazy looking rocks because I'm not going to pick up these rocks and neither will Daryl for a long time because this is like labor. <laughs> so, like not just labor, but like backbreaking labor. And some of us already have a broken back. So I'm going to keep these three just as they are. And those little super beanas that are dying. <laughs> I've planted one right here, planted one right there. Yeah, that's that little dead little shrub right there. A little tiny little bit, all that's kind of dead. <laughs> and then I put two more here. So it's kind of goes like between my roses. One, two, and three. We'll see how it goes. I have a feeling it's gonna die a little bit on the side. You know what? I'm kind of glad that I didn't take out Lantana. I would have been very sad because it is one of those beautiful, uh, trailing plants that I adore. Every time I pass somewhere and I see lantana, this purple lantana kind of cascading, I'm like, oh, that's so pretty. I can't wait for mine to be that big. <laughs> so it might be just the time that it takes to establish itself. Okay, my C kicked in. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon again. Bye bye. Oh, yes, and please, please, please give me opinions about the chair. Because I really need your guys' help. I have no idea what to do with it. Again, I think I'm going to do the garden chair. Like um, like I said, like planter inside of it. And make it into like a beautiful planter. <laughs> Somewhere. I know it kind of sounds a little cuckoo. But I think it's going to be cool. I do not want this chair in the house. Unless you tell me otherwise. And offer me something else. I don't know. <laughs> okay, bye bye.